All right, you guys, I want to show you how to do the Photoshop portion of the basic composite assignment. Get all your photos into Lightroom and go ahead and edit them uh, for brightness and contrast and make them look good. Try to create as much separation as you can between your subject and the background. You can see, like, here's the original version of this photo, and here's the edited version. This was pretty underexposed, uh, so it doesn't look great edited, but we want to really separate the camera from the background because trying to cut this out, see how that's black right there and that shadow is really black? It's going to be really hard to cut out if we don't brighten this up. So get all of your images looking good, and then we're just going to one at a time, just right click on them and go to edit in Photoshop. So let's start with this first one of the ping pong paddle. Okay, once we've got this image open in Photoshop, go ahead and remove the background how you normally would. I'm not going to go over that in this video. If you need help figuring out how to remove the background, watch this video up here somewhere. I do want to show you one thing. So let me get to the point where we get into Select and Mask. I want to show you something. So two sliders that you might want to use a lot in here are the Smooth Slider and the Shift Edge Slider. Since we're using a very smooth object, we're not doing a person or anything that's rough, it wouldn't hurt to smooth out the edges here. So I'm going to crank up the Smooth Slider a little bit, and you'll see a subtle difference. It's not huge, but it's just going to smooth out those edges for me. And I also am going to shift the edge in a little bit. I'm going to subtract. I'm basically removing a tiny little bit of the edge. And again, because this is so smooth and it doesn't have hair or anything like that, shifting the edge in a little bit can help quite a bit here. And it does take a little time to think about it. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and just output this how I normally would. Try to decontaminate colors. Don't really need it in this example. And we'll output it to a new layer with layer mask. Okay, let me show you what we're going to do next. Let's just put this on pause. Actually, real quick, let's do a quick file save on this so that my saved work will now go back into Lightroom. I don't have to worry about where I saved it. Lightroom's storing it for me. Let's just stop for a second and come up here and go to File, New. And this is where we're going to build our actual composite. So let's make this a big image. So let's make this like 11 inches wide. Make sure this is on inches and remember to change this first. If this is on pixels and you come in here and type 11 and then you're like, oh shoot, I left it on pixels and then switch it to inches. Look at that. That's 0 0.037 inches. So 11 inches. Let's go 14 inches for the height and 300 for the resolution. That's a pretty big canvas we're creating. But if you have your settings like that, it should work just great. So 11 by 14 by 300. and Let's create that. And then let's just come over here to the ping pong paddle. We've got two tabs up here at the top of the screen. Come and click on this other one. Remember, we can't just copy and paste this because it has a layer mask. So come over here, click on your layer thumbnail right there. Grab your move tool. That's this tool right here. Keyboard shortcut is V. And we're just going to click on this and drag it up to this other tab. Hold it there for a second until it switches. Not letting go of the mouse. We're going to drag back down and let go. And if you see anything like this, just go ahead and press, actually press don't show again and hit yes. So I'm going to just do that. You can see I now got a ping pong paddle on here that I can do whatever I want with. Let's save this real quick. So let's do a little file, save. And this time we got to really pay attention. This is not going to automatically go into Lightroom. So let's make sure we're saving this in the right spot. Google Drive, shared drives, photography, your class, your period, your name. And I might even make a new folder in here called uh, PS first composite. This is our first composite we're making in Photoshop. Go ahead and click on create and let's give this a name composite one. If you see maximize compatibility, check don't show again and press OK. Uh, okay, we're going to leave this open, but we're going to come over here to this one and we're going to close it. It's already saved up, so we're just going to close it. And we're just going to go back to Lightroom and we're going to continue to work through all six of our images. I just want to point out real quick, notice my ping pong paddle. It has this number two here now, so it's got a two. So I can click on this and I can see I've got my cutout version and my original version. They're both here. So if I wanted to start over with the original one, I could do that. If I wanted to keep working on my cutout one, I could do that. Uh, to get out of this view, just come and click on this X right here. So go through, pause the video, go through all of your objects, get all the backgrounds cut out, and get all of your objects on this canvas right here, and uh, and we will go from there. All right, I only have three objects in here, but for the sake of time, I'm going to just show you what you would do next. And at this point, you guys, it's time to create some art. It's time to be creative and see what you can come up with, right? So uh, I just want to show you a few things. Remember, if you have, with your move tool selected up here in the top left-hand corner, 
auto select layer will make it so that whatever object I click on will become active here in the layers panel and I can move it around and once I've selected it one of our favorite things to do is command T right command T allows me to resize things rotate things I can um, flip things around so they're backwards now uh, like by doing that or this right here whoop you see that and then of course just press return so that's a way you can re, uh, resize and change things around uh, I want to show you, of course, you know you can lower the opacity of objects. So if I want my ping pong paddle to be slightly see-through, I'll click on it, and I'll come over here to my opacity slider and click and drag that down, up or down to change the opacity of that and make it see-through. And you can see, um, let's see, let's do this. So now I want the ping pong paddle to be on top of the wallet. How do I do that? I'll just come over here in my layers panel. Here's my wallet layer. Here's my ping pong paddle layer. I'm going to move this up, up, up over the wallet layer. And now the ping pong paddle is on top of the wallet and the flashlight. And because the ping pong paddle has an opacity that's been lowered to 51%, you can see it. Now, we're going to need more than one of a lot of these things. So let's say I want another wallet. How do I get another one? Well, I could come over here and right click on this layer and choose duplicate layer right there. You could also press Command J on your keyboard. Command J, you can see I just pressed that and now I have two wallets. But my favorite thing to do and the easiest thing to do is with the move tool selected is just hold down option on your keyboard and just click on a subject and drag it and just like that you have another one. Watch this. I'm going to hold down option. I'm going to select my flashlight, hold down option and click and drag and now I have two flashlights. Okay. Very cool, very cool. So that, that's an easy way to duplicate things. And then one last thing, let's say on this flashlight, I want the strap, but on this one, I don't want the strap to be there. So what do I do in that case? Well, remember, these all have layer masks tied to them. So I can just select this layer mask right here on this flashlight. And I can tell that's the one by turning it on or off. And I just grab my brush tool, keyboard shortcut B, Control Option left click to make it bigger or smaller. And remember, black is going to make things disappear. So I'm going to paint with black over the strap. And now on this flashlight, I no longer have the strap there if I didn't want it. One last thing here. Well, let's say you're in a situation like this where I want to grab this flashlight, but it's underneath the ping pong paddle. So when I go to click on it, it's just always selecting the ping pong paddle. And I don't want to move the ping pong paddle. Maybe I've got a whole nice artistic thing going here and I don't want to mess with it. You can always come up here to the top and you can uncheck auto select layer. So I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to grab this layer, whichever one is the flashlight I want to move, which is this one right here. And because auto select layer is checked, I can click anywhere on my screen and move and it's going to move that layer for me so maybe I want to move that down here and command oops command T it and rotate it I don't know we'll do something with it there then press return and then just remember to turn auto select layer back on when you're done okay so there you go that's kind of all the tips and tricks and things you need to know to make this look awesome you can download an image on the internet and use that as your background so if you don't want a plain white background and you want something more interesting in your background feel free to download an image off of the internet and use that for your background when you are done of course make sure to save it once as a psd so file save save that as a dot psd file and of course we can't turn in psd files so we need to do file save a copy at which point we'll make sure we're in the right folder. I'm still in my PS first composite folder. I'll call it composite one finished. And I'm going to change the format from a Photoshop to a JPEG because that's what I'm going to turn in on the internet. I'll hit save. Remember when this box pops up somewhere between eight and 10 is perfect for this number right here. Go ahead and just press OK and you are good to go. Make sure you turn in that JPEG file. I won't even allow you. Canvas won't even let you upload a PSD file. So if you try to upload it to Canvas and it doesn't work, it's because you're uploading the wrong file. Let me know if you need any help. 